Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're taking a look at what's happening in the housing market and making sense out of some pretty confusing data. Last week, we reported that lumber prices have increased to record levels, driven by outdoor construction projects at restaurants, the low inventory in homes for sale, and the numerous home improvement projects that are driving demand for building materials. On a recent project that I'm building, I'm receiving quotes of five to six weeks for wood siding that would normally be a two-week delivery item. Stock items have disappeared off the shelves. Even items that real estate agents normally use have disappeared from the shelves. The shelves that house laser measurement tools and lockboxes are completely bare. Construction trades for large projects in my market are booked for the next 18 months. We just had a builder in Utah decline an attractive land purchase that had been previously committed. When that happens, it's usually because they're worried about making a financial commitment to building houses. But in this case, they decline because they're so busy with existing construction projects they don't have the capacity to even start those jobs in the foreseeable future. The headlines read that housing sales volumes for existing houses jumped 20.7% in the past month. Driving sales are apartment renters seeking more space, young families moving to the suburbs, and city dwellers looking for second homes. At the same time, the supply of houses remains very low, with the pandemic making potential sellers cautious about letting people tour their homes. The demand for houses is clearly there. So let's put this in perspective. Home sales are still down 11% compared with this time last year, which was a slow year by many measures. So arguably, the market has the ability to support a higher level of activity without being considered overheated. The housing market's been a rare bright spot for what's expected to be an exceptionally weak economy in the second quarter this year. GDP is expected to have contracted an annualized 35% rate in the second quarter, and this would be the sharpest quarterly decline in records dating back to 1947. Home sales have been in a two-year rut heading into 2020, weighed down by tight supply and historically high home prices. Even solid economic growth and low unemployment couldn't get sales moving back in 2019, and that seems like a lifetime ago. The housing market showed signs of finally busting out when activity surged at the start of the year. February existing home sales hit their highest monthly pace in 13 years, but they hit a wall a few weeks later after the lockdowns from the pandemic hit. And that prevented real estate agents from showing homes and prompted many sellers to pull their houses off the market. Homes typically go under contract a month or two before the sale closes, so the June data suggests these purchases were made in April or May, when we are still in a stricter lockdown environment, so I'm expecting the July data to be even stronger than June. Some agents and brokers I've spoken with are optimistic that the usual spring demand has been pushed into the summer, and we're seeing our traditional spring market now in the middle of summer. My take is the market is being constrained on the supply side. People are not moving in the same numbers that we've seen in historical years. That's reduced the supply of houses coming out of the market. We often see this happen when prices rise. People want to move, but they don't because they can't find anywhere else to move to. They bought a house a decade ago at a good price, maybe $150,000 or $200,000. Their home might have increased in value and now might command a price of, say, half a million. But the seller is still living in a house that they paid $200,000 for. And if they buy something new, they're looking at prices starting at half a million. Yes, they've got a lot more equity to work with but they often don't see the purpose behind getting a larger mortgage and buying a house with a larger price tag and higher property taxes. They'll move if they're forced to move because of a life event, but not just for a change of scenery. I'm currently in negotiation with a homeowner whose name is Andy for a property that's on the edge of a larger development site. Andy and his wife bought their house for 350000 Prices in the neighborhood have skyrocketed to more than $1.2 million. They love their 100-year-old Victorian-style home, and if they move they're looking at a brand new house above a million dollars. They'll have the opportunity to pocket a bit of cash from the sale, but they don't see a lifestyle enhancement and they'll certainly pay more in property taxes. So they're deciding not to sell and stay where they are. That's another house that will not go on the market this year. Even my neighbor across the street wants to downsize from her current house, but there's so little inventory, she's scared to put her house on the market. It'll sell quickly, maybe in a couple of days, and she will not find a house to replace the one she's living in. So that's another house that will not go on the market this year. So as you think about that, consider building new construction if you can find the trades to do the work. Have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. And we'll talk to you again tomorrow. 